for five minutes. Mr. Flaherty, as you were putting the heat on social media companies, did you make the decisions which posts were most egregious to highlight or flag, or were there other people telling you which posts to go and express concern about? Congressman, uh, uh, I'll say in general, we were um, uh, lifting up examples of content that um, we felt were violent. Right, when you say we, I just want to know which, which human beings were involved in deciding, like, this Leonardo DiCaprio meme had to go. In, in, in general, we were um, discussing uh, specific pieces of content when we were discussing. No, I, again, I know you guys love content. pronouns, but we is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the names of the people. Uh, Congressman, I'm, I'm not authorized to... Um, uh, well, you wrote an email discussion. on April 21st, 2021. We remain concerned that YouTube is funneling people into vaccine hesitancy. This concern is shared at the highest, and I mean highest, levels of the White House. So we'd like to continue a good faith dialogue here. I'm on the hook for reporting out. Who were you on the hook for reporting out to? Congressman, I, I, I can't recall who specifically I was referencing in that document. Because you kind of just strike me as a functionary. I don't really think you were making these decisions. I think that these people that you say the highest levels of the White, when you say the highest, and I mean the highest levels of the White House, who are you referring to without using the word we? Congressman, I, I can't recall specifically who I'm referencing. Well, when you talking. say the, are you talking about President Biden? Congressman, I, I don't think it should be a surprise that the administration was focused on the issue of, of, of presenting authoritative by, information by the way, about the I vaccine. find your testimony terrifying, but incredibly intellectually honest. Because you've come here and you've taken the position, look, you know, in, in the White House, people are always trying to shape how information is received. They do it with the New York Times. You've seen it on the West Wing. And I think a lot of Americans see a distinction between powerful White House officials trying to shape a news story in the Washington Post and then trying to shape what all of America and the world can see in, in the digital information space. But you say there's no distinction there, and I think that's honest. It scares the hell out of me, but that seems to be your testimony, right? Congressman, these platforms are making hundreds of millions of algorithmic editorial decisions a second. And those algorithmic decisions. I get it. I just don't want the White House participating in them. I get that to have social media companies, there are all these decisions that made, get made about what content rises and falls. What we have a problem with is when the United States government is putting their thumb on the scale. Now, you said there were no threats and there were no consequences. Was there pressure? Did you put pressure on social media companies? Congressman, we certainly raised areas where we had uh, 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 questions about their policies or concerns about their Would you categorize that as pressure, policies. yes or no? Uh, Congressman, I, I can't speak to how they uh, interpreted my conversations. All well, I can because there's an email about it. Nick Clegg sends an email. The title is Andy Slavitt Podcast, and he asks people at Facebook, can someone quick, quickly remind me why, are, why we are removing rather than demoting or labeling claims that COVID is is man-made before May. And the reply to that email is, and I quote, because we were under pressure from the administration, we shouldn't have done it. So were you part of that pressure campaign? Congressman, again, having not seen the document, I can't speak to who they're referencing or, or what they're referencing. Um, all I can say is- well, Mr. Slavitt, were you a part of that pressure campaign? Uh, I don't believe we were. Uh, applying any undue pressure on social media companies. I don't think they interpreted it that way. Well, they, in writing they have, Mr. Chairman, I, I seek to enter into the record the email where the people at Objection. Facebook are saying, okay, well. Objection. Fine. It exists. It's part, it, it, you know, it's out there. And, and Mr. Slavitt, there's another email, which I'm sure the Democrats would object to, to having considered, where a Facebook employee says, Jutz got off an hour-long call with Andy Slavitt. He was outraged, not too strong a word to describe his reaction, that we did not remove this post, which was the third most highly ranked in the data we sent him. That was a Leonardo DiCaprio meme. That was a joke. Were you guys trying to get jokes removed? Mr. Congressman, th thanks for asking. I'll try to explain but really briefly. The, uh, if, if Facebook, by their own policy, had put something on their website which said 250,000 people are dying every year from the vaccine, that would undoubtedly have violated their policy. Okay, well, let's go to so true information. Hold on, let's go to true information then. Because th in another Facebook document, they say, quote, the Surgeon General wants us to remove true information about side effects. M Mr. Flaherty, should true information be removed? 
Congressman, I, I can't speak to what they're Can't right. even speak to whether or not we should censor the truth because they don't like where it leads. I see I'm out of town. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Yields back. The uh, gentlelady from uh, California is recognized. Ms. Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, it has not escaped my notice that 